Hello and welcome to my video on earned value. In this video, I'm going to show you how to work out the formulas uh, for earned value so that you can be ready for your project management professional exam. I'm going to use an example of a construction project. And here, I want you to imagine that you're the project manager for the construction of 20 miles of sidewalk. And according to your plan, the cost of construction will be $15,000 per mile, and it's going to take eight weeks to complete. So the whole duration um, is eight weeks. Uh, the scope of the work is 20 miles, and the cost is going to be $15,000 per mile. All right? Two weeks into the project, you've spent $55,000 and completed four miles of sidewalk, and you want to report performance and determine how much time and cost remain. All right, so the first thing we need to do is figure out how much this project should have cost, right? And that's called the budgeted at completion. The budgeted at completion is how much this project is budgeted for by the time it's completed, meaning the budget of the project. So since this was 20 miles, right? 20 miles times $15,000 per mile, and that's going to give you $300,000 as a total budget. Next thing we need to solve is the planned value. The planned value is also known as the budgeted cost of work scheduled. This is what you have scheduled, or this is what you, th you think you should have completed by now. Now, we are two weeks into this project. Therefore, uh, two weeks out of eight weeks project, you should have done a quarter of the work. All right? Now, there's more than one way to do this, but, you know, I would just figure... Um, if in eight weeks we have to do 20 miles, then in four weeks we would have to do, so I'm just going to put 20 here. This is eight weeks, right? Uh, then 10, 10 miles should have been done in four weeks, and then five miles should have been done in two weeks, right? I'm just splitting it. So essentially, I should have done five miles in two weeks, all right? Uh, so let me just erase these. Five miles in two weeks. Let me do the math. Five miles is my planned value, and the cost of five miles, because it is $15,000 per mile, um, is going to come to $75,000. So what we're saying here is that in two weeks, I should have done five miles, which is worth $75,000. Now let's look at the reality, which is earned value. How much have we actually done? This is the budgeted cost of work actually performed, BCWP. We've done four miles of sidewalk, and the four miles that we've done are worth how much? They're worth $15,000 each, right? And therefore, the four miles are worth $60,000. So we have done $60,000 worth of work, and that is considered the earned value. Now let's go back to solving this actual cost. As you recall, we've spent $55,000, so that's a given, right? That's the actual cost. Now we do the formulas, all right? Cost variance. How much are we varying from the original plan? To, re to solve the cost variance, you solve it by doing this. It's earned value minus actual cost, okay? Um, the earned value is the value of the work, budgeted work, that you've actually completed. In this instance, we've completed 60000 worth of work, and our actual cost is fifty-five, which is really good, and we end up with a positive $5,000 extra, right? So that's the extra. So our cost variance is actually positive, all right? Now, next thing that you want to solve is the cost performance index. Uh, the cost performance index is the same thing as the cost variance, all right? So here's the trick. This is something you want to remember. It's the same thing as the cost variance, but because variance is a difference between two things, an index is a ratio, uh, instead of subtracting, we divide. So it's the same formula that you see here, okay? The same formula that you're seeing here right? But instead of subtracting, what we're going to do is we're going to divide, all right? So I'm going to do earned value 
divided by actual cost. And that would be 60 divided by 55. And that will give me 1.09. And what that tells you is that for every dollar that you had budgeted on this project, you're actually getting a dollar and nine cents in value. And if you look at the way, um, if you look at the, um, the formula, it says that I got $60,000 worth of value by spending $55 of the money. And that means I got a dollar and nine cents in value for every dollar I had planned to spend. Or basically I accomplished a dollar and nine cents of value of work with every dollar that I invested into this one project. So we're actually doing really well for money. <clears throat> All right, so this is a similarity that you wanna remember between cost variance and uh, cost performance index. All right, the cost variance is a, is a difference between two and so you subtract. The cost performance index is the ratio, so you divide, all right? That's the key difference here between the two. They have exactly the same items. They both have the earned value and they both have the actual cost, all right? So now what you wanna think, every time you hear variance, it's something you have to subtract. And every time you hear index, it means divide. They all start with earned value. These four formulas, so cost variance, cost performance index, schedule variance, schedule performance index, they all start with earned value, okay? So this one also starts with earned value. Um, the one that has to do with cost, cost variance and cost performance index, uh, these here, they finish up with actual cost, okay? So they have actual cost there. The ones that have to do with planning, which is schedule variance, uh, they will have the plan value. So schedule variance and schedule performance index, they end up with plan value. Variance is minus, index is divide. All right, so for schedule variance, our earned value, what we actually did here, is 60, what we had planned to have done is 75, if you recall from earlier, so we are behind 15, 15,000. This is $15,000 worth of work, and that's the equivalent of that one mile that we're behind. Remember, in two weeks, we should have done five miles because the whole project is eight weeks for 20 miles, four weeks would be 10 miles, two weeks would be five miles, and but instead of doing five miles, we did four miles, so we're actually behind one mile, and that's the equivalent of the $15,000 that it's showing here. All right, for the schedule performance index, uh, it is earned value by uh, planned value, which is this, and the earned value here is 60 divided by 75, and that's gonna give you 0 0.8, essentially telling you that you're running at 80% speed, all right? And that makes sense uh, because we've done four miles instead of five miles, and that's 80% of the speed. All right, let's roll this up a little bit. Let's solve the rest of the formula. We have estimated completion. <clears throat> you gotta remember all the numbers that we've done so far, all right? Estimate at completion, this is a forecast, essentially. EAC is a forecast of how much you think this project is going to cost. Mind you, this project was budgeted at 300,000, right? Now, our cost performance index is 1.09. It's actually good. We are getting a dollar and nine cents worth of value for every dollar that we had estimated, all right? Or that we had budgeted for this one project. And for you to solve the estimate at completion, what you have to do is take the original budget, $300,000, $300, we divide it by the current CPI, which is 1.09, and we get, uh, we get around $275,000. So you can do this on a calculator, you get roughly $275,000. 
Now, this is the forecast that you'll give management. So you say instead of $300,000, we are now looking to spend only $275,000. So imagine if your CPI was two, what would happen? If you write two here, if that's your CPI, then your estimate at completion, right, would be 300 divided by two and it'll give you 150,000. And that would make sense if for the four miles you spent Instead of spending 60000 you spent 30000 That means you're spending half the money and you're getting the job done. So basically, a $300,000 job would finish at $150,000. All right? Um, so this is why you put the CPI in the bottom. This is why it needs to be in the bottom. Now, if all we're going to spend is $275,000, then how much more money do we need for this one project? You do the math, the estimate to complete, which is this one here, uh, says that we are now forecasting 275000 We have spent $55,000 already, so we're looking to spend another $220,000. That's the remaining money we need to finish the project. And based on this one forecast of $275,000, our variance at completion of the project is going to be 300,000, the original budget, minus the 275,000 that we're now forecasting. And that's going to give us roughly a $25,000 variance. And that's how much more money would be left at the end. Hope it's making sense up to this point. There's one more thing we need to complete here, which is the two complete performance index. All right. To complete performance index. This is a bit complicated and what the two complete performance index talks about is what kind of cost performance index we need for the remainder of the project for us to be able to meet a certain number. So you see here I have two examples. The first one here would be the TCPI based on the budget at completion. The original budget at completion is 300,000. All right. If all if if there's no intention to save money, and if the uh, if management just wants me to finish the project at three hundred thousand dollars, that's going to leave me with how much money? So, and that's how much more work do I have left? Remember, TCPI is trying to figure out what should be your C, your CPI for the remainder of the project. So, it's a two complete performance index. All right to complete, essentially it's to complete cost performance index. And to solve cost performance index, you actually have to solve earned value by actual cost. And since we're trying to solve the to complete, means it means we need to figure out the to, the to complete earned value. The original budget or the original amount of work is 300,000 and the earned value so far is 60. That's how much we've completed, the four miles. And so the remaining uh, earned value in this instance is 240,000. Now we have to look at the actual cost that we can spend for the rest of the project. If management is willing to let us spend the whole 300,000 that they had budgeted, then the, and we've already spent 55, then the remaining money is 245,000, right? And so when you divide these, you'll get something like 0 0.99 or something like that, all right? That means you can underperform going forward because, you know, on your CPI, which is earned value by actual cost, why? Because management is okay for you to spend the 300,000, and that's why we were saying this was TCPI based on the BAC, on the budget at completion. Now, there's another scenario where the TCPI uh, would be based on, let's say, the estimate at completion. Remember, we had estimated to management that we would finish the project for 275000 right? In this instance, if all the money we're going to spend is 275000 then that number changes in the bottom, and it says the actual cost for all the work going forward can only be the estimate, which is 275 minus the 55 we already spent. But the actual work, which is the earned value, does not change, right? We still have 300,000 worth of work. We've done 60 out of it. We still have 240 left. But the money remaining here, because they only want us to spend the estimated amount, which is 275, 275 minus 
uh, minus 55 is going to give me instead of 245 will give me 220 right and so when you divide 240 by 220 you get 1.09 funny enough that it came to 1.09 why is it 1.09 well because the estimate of completion was actually based on the CPI of 1.09 so essentially if you want to finish the project at the estimated amount of 275 then continue with the current CPI of 1.09 does that make sense well that brings us to the very end of uh, earned value hope this was of value to you hopefully you earned some value out of this if you have any questions uh, put the questions in the comments below if you like the video please please give me a thumbs up um, and if you think others will benefit from it uh, share with them if you'd like to have a template um, a cheat sheet that shows you all of what we've covered above all of these things in a nice fashion uh, I am going to show you a link right now just uh, follow this link to download this one template down uh, and or the cheat sheet to download it down and this will go nicely with this video uh, and that's all for now and if you haven't subscribed please make sure to click the subscribe button and also click the notification bell so that I so that you'll be notified when the next video is released thank you very much see you on the next video bye bye